Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. We pray to God, our Father, in the name of Jesus this evening. Today is Tuesday, uh, the 9th of March, 2021. Father, we are grateful for saving us, for giving us life, and all the good things that we have received. We thank you for the souls being won. We thank you, Lord, for helping nations. We thank you for your church. We exalt your holy name. Tonight we pray. We ask that you teach us your word. And that through Jesus you set people free. All those who are in the camp, in the grip, in the life of Satan. Set them free, Lord. For them to experience your kingdom's blessings. Speak through me in Jesus' name. Amen. So God bless you, brother, sister, this evening. And uh, we will be looking into God's word. So as usual, we will be sharing the link so that friends and family members, those who can, can join us to um, be partakers of tonight's service. And I hope everyone is doing well, everyone is being kept safe by the power of the Lord God Almighty. So I'm just sharing the link with friends. And, and you can do the same if you can share the link with friends for them to join us, family members, to join us someone's life. I'm sure it will be turned around today. Thank you, Father. So, so you share the link with people to join us uh, on Facebook. Thank you, Father. T -t Tonight, our teaching topic is many people have been sadly sacrificed to idols or demons. Idols contain within them demons, evil spirits. So when you see an idol, there is always a demon, an evil spirit in that object or in that being that has become an idol. So many people have been sadly sacrificed to idols or demons, but Jesus can set them free. Christ Jesus, the Son of God, can set them free. And this is our topic tonight. And people who have been sacrificed to idols or demons, they suffer unnecessary in life. They are denying the life of God or the life that God ordained for human beings. For example, marriage life. In Genesis 2, we, we know that God said that it was not good for the first man to be alone. So God gave him the union of marriage. And since then, we uh, all been receiving blessings from this union. Holy life, those who have been sacrificed uh, to idols and in, uh, demons cannot live a holy life. Because the demons or the idols will, will want them to live their lifestyle, not their true a destined life in holiness and righteousness in Christ Jesus. They are not able to experience peace because they are not, uh, they cannot live independent of the influence of these demons. So they cannot experience the peace of God in their lives. They cannot, or uh, they don't experience the indwelling of the Holy Spirit because something else has taken over their life. Some other spirits, they cannot be free from evil spirits. In fact, their life is free all the time controlled by evil spirits. They cannot enjoy righteousness, you know, the righteousness of Christ. Because the demons and the evil spirit will drive them away from Christ. They cannot enjoy peace, cannot enjoy anything that God has ordained for us. We have a typical example in the book of Mark 9, 17 to 18, where someone said to Christ that uh, his son had, uh, uh, there was a, a, a demon who, had possessed his son, and therefore he asked Jesus to help cast out the demon. So, so in the book of Mark 9, 17, 18, for example, it says, read the book of Mark 9, 17, 18, it says, A man in a crowd answered, Teacher, I brought my son, who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. So this guy could not talk because... That the spirit has robbed him of speech, and the evil spirit can rob people of, of all other good things in life. 18. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him, him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I ask your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. If you continue the rest of the story, Christ cast out that evil spirit from the boy, and the boy was free. And so there are many who have been robbed of true life because they have been sacrificed 
uh, to demons or idols. Or these demons or idols have come into your life through other means. So how does this happen? That a, a, a spirit can seize a human being, draw him of speech, and some people of joy and peace, mental peace, and also the righteousness of God. How does this happen? You see, human beings, we love celebrations, especially if life is good. We want to celebrate. In the book of Exodus 32, we see how the Israelites celebrated before an idol and calling that idol their God when, when, when Moses went to God for 40 days and 40 nights. And, and two, and human beings will make the greatest sacrifice for what they are seeking for. Power, money, protection, victory against their enemy. But when these sacrifices and celebrations are not done for God or in honor of God or according to God's prescriptions, then these sacrifices now would be offered to idols or demons and the idols or demons would take over the people's life and then they will harm them. So that's how people most of the time get themselves in, in, in uh, you know, uh, how, how they are sacrificed or how evil spirit and evil influence also come into uh, their lives. Some, in those days, some were even making sacrifices to, to a false queen of heaven, Jeremiah 44, 15 to 19. And also, if human beings will not live a godly life, evil spirits can influence how they live to torment them. So when you don't live a, a, a good life, that, that those demons and evil spirits and idols, they love filth. They don't love holiness and righteousness. So you feed them and you attract them into your life. The book of Ephesians 2, 1 to 3, 2 tells us that if a lifestyle is not uh, godly, then uh, this evil spirit can also come. In there. So, and so let's read some scriptures to help us understand some of these topics. Let's first go to Exodus 32, 1 to 8, and how human beings will love sacrifice. We love it. We love sacrifices and worship. So if there is no worship of God, Something else will replace that. Exodus 32. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come make us gods, small gene, who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron answered, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and daughters are wearing. And when they did, verse 5 says, When Aaron saw the idol, he saw all the collections he built an idol in front of the calf and announced tomorrow there will be a festival to the lord so the next day the people rose early sacrificed burnt offerings presented fellowship offerings afterward they sat to eat and drink and to and got up to indulge in reverie so that human beings will love sacrifices when life is good and stuff but even when we are in difficulty uh, we are we still love sacrifices genesis 22 tells us how Abraham nearly sacrificed Isaac to the Lord, had not God prescribed that lamb for that sacrifice. So, so that is our nature. Right? And at some point, I'll be saying that the purpose why God, the reason why God gave us all those prescriptions and on how to make sacrifices and, 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 and unique celebrations was simple uh, so that we will learn that he's the only one to whom we must make sacrifices to. But we will come to that point. Uh, in a minute. So, if, if life is good, celebrations. And let's go to First Kings sixteen thirty four. It tells how a man sacrificed his two sons in order to build the walls and the gate of Jericho. So it says, in Ahab's time, Hail of Bethel rebuilt Jericho. He laid its foundation at the cost of his first son Abiram. And he set up its gate at the cost of his youngest son, Segu, in, in accordance with the word of the Lord spoken by Joshua, son of uh, Nun. And so this man, a, a military general, and there was a big promise that whoever can, can build the wall and then the gates of uh, Jericho, he'll be on it. But we know from the book of uh, 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 Joshua 6.26 that uh, Joshua put a curse on Jericho and said, whoever will build this city, Will do it, can only do that if he sacrifices his sons, two sons, first and last. The book of Joshua 6:26 says, At that time, Joshua invoked this solemn oath. First, before the Lord is the man who raises up and builds this city. Jericho, at the cost of his firstborn, he will lay its foundations. 
and on the cross of his youngest son, he will set up the gate. So yeah, this man did that. He sacrificed his son. What that meant was that the, the, the son, that the, the, his sons could not live a normal lifestyle. So when it comes to power, prestige, money, fame, people will do all kinds of things. Some will even uh, sacrifice part of their human body to demons to get that. And, and sadly, a lot of people you know, are going through this unfortunate experience. Uh, but Jesus Christ can set them free. And in fact, that is what the gospel does. When the gospel is preached and people believe Christ becomes their Lord. And that gives Christ the authority to cast out every demon from that man or that woman. And from that day on, Jesus becomes the Lord and Savior of that man. And if you are going through that experience, if you know anyone going through any kind of uh, demonic, how uh, do call it, uh, uh, influences, please introduce the person to Jesus. Even as we speak, if you think that you have that uh, in your life, let Jesus be your Lord and remain faithful to Christ and live the life that Christ wants you to do. Some, as we said, some will even sacrifice uh, uh, they are they are lied to uh, 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 to the uh, false queen of of, uh, of of heaven. Let's read uh, Jeremiah forty four fifteen to nineteen. We see this story there as well. That when that was when some of the uh, Israelites found themselves in in Egypt, uh, they sacrificed to the queen of heaven. They forgot the Lord their God. So Jeremiah 44, 15 says, Then all the men who knew that their wives were burning incense to other gods, along with all the women who were present, a large assembly and all the people living in Lower and Upper Egypt said to Jeremiah the prophet, We will not listen to the message you have spoken to us in the name of the Lord. We will certainly do everything we said we would. We will burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and, and will pour our drink offerings to her, just as we and our ancestors and our kings and our officials did in the towns of Judah and the street of Jerusalem. They were making sacrifices to a supposed a queen of heaven. There was, there's nothing like that. It was a demon who has claimed that position, that authority, and was demanding people to make sacrifices. And there's only one God. And then when we talk about God, God is not a man or a woman. And so God... I need no queen at all. You see, there are three things that bring a civilization down, a society down. The first one is idolatry. The second one is sexual immorality. The third one is wickedness. Idolatry was the downfall of both Israel and Judah. They became very, very, they became people who loved worshiping idols. Every place, you see them uh, mounting idols and worshiping. And so that brought them uh, down that sent them to captivity uh, captivity uh, in the time of Noah it was wickedness that brought that civilization down and the time of uh, 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 Sodom and Gomorrah it was sexual immorality but uh, a civilization can, can also come down through a combination of these three either the society becomes too wicked and sexually immoral or they become too wicked and then they also become idol worshippers, or either one of them. So as a people, we must always watch out. If you're a man, if you're a woman, you become very wicked, you know, your future is not good. If you become an idol worshipper, your future is not good. If you become sexual immoral, your future is not good. As a nation or a group of people, if we become wicked, like the days of Noah, we don't have future, we will perish. If we become sexual immoral, we shall perish if we become idolaters forsaking the living god and worshiping idols like what happened to judah and israel we shall surely perish and so let's watch out that we we, as we will serve only the only god we will not become wicked people and that will not become sexually immoral so let's look at the purpose of of god's prescribed celebrations and sacrifices when you read the book of leviticus and and I think, I, I mean, the first I, I, I book, five books of Moses, there were a lot of prescriptions on sacrifices and celebrations. Let's try to understand why did God do that? Very simple. The whole purpose of God prescribing festivals for us in Scripture was to teach us that we should not celebrate or sacrifice anything to any idol or human being but Him alone. That was the purpose. That God was teaching us that we should not celebrate or sacrifice, do any sacrifice to anybody, uh, for anybody or an idol. 
but him alone, but even him according to his prescription. If not, you'll be sacrificing to an idol you don't know. There are many people, they go to some false prophets and false servants of God, and they make sacrifices without even knowing that they are sacrificing to idols. But when you read the, the word of God and you allow uh, the church to teach you God's word properly, when you get to such places, you know that this place, there's an idol there. I don't need to do anything there. Then you, you will go back. So, uh, and in and, and, and the days of Daniel, it was easier for, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to say or to reject the idea of worshipping the idol that King Nebuchadnezzar made. We know the story. It was very easy for them because they were taught that they must worship God alone. They must make, make sacrifices to him alone. They must celebrate special festivals to God alone. So when King Nebuchadnezzar made that idol, and said, if you don't worship this idol, I will kill you. The guy said, you can kill us. But you will not worship them. But, but they knew. You see, if you don't know how to worship and make sacrifices, anything else can influence you to do contrary things. In the same way, it was very easy for the early church to reject the idea that the emperors were to be worshipped. When they claim to be divine and demanded that all should worship them. So some of the Roman uh, uh, empires, they demanded worship because they proclaimed themselves to be divine. But the early church said there's only one divine, that is the God. And he sent Christ to save us. And so they never worshiped because they knew from scripture. So, so uh, if you want to uh, keep this in mind, I think it will help you a lot. Let's go to our main text, Exodus 34, verse 10 to 28, so that when you are reading the Old Testament, you will indeed appreciate all that the Lord said. You will not be complaining, oh, all this plenty uh, regulations. Why? See, if you don't know how to worship God, you worship an idol or a demon. If you don't know how to seek the face of God for help, when you need spiritual help, you go to a witch doctor or some false man of God to seek help. Even, even our father Abraham nearly sacrificed his son. And throughout scripture, we see great men. And even in our days, people are still consulting spirits and making sacrifices because they don't know that in Christ, they can get the same thing, the same power, the same uh, protection from their enemies. And so they go to other places to seek and harm themselves. They bring demons home to affect their wives, their children, their husbands, and their businesses, their health. If a demon is in your life, you know, you know John 10, 10, 8 tells us that the enemy, he came to steal, kill, and destroy. And the enemy has many agents. And demons are some of his uh, agents. So the book of Exodus 34, uh, the whole... Uh, text tells us Moses' second visit to the mountain uh, for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, he went the first time and when he was coming down chapter 32, he saw that the people had made themselves an idol and, and they were worshipping and so he was so angry that he threw the stone, the tablet that contained the covenant down and from chapter 33, 34 God invited him to come again to have to receive the covenant and to be given to the people. So but we read only from Verse 10, uh, so that we can uh, uh, capture, understand what is going on. So verse 10 says, Then the Lord said, I'm making a new covenant with you. I'm reading from Exodus 34, verse 10. Before all your people, I'll do wonders never before done any nation in all the world. The people you live among will see how also is the work that I, the Lord, will do for you. Obey what I command you today. I will drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and Jebusites. Church, these people were, were civilized, they were developed, but they were all idol worshippers. So they were doing all kinds of things, killing their sons and daughters and harming themselves. So they, they, they were not fit to live among humanity, if you like. And so God said, I will drive all these people away because they have become idol worshippers. But they, 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 uh, they, they had redeveloped. Developed. And so the Israelites were afraid that how are we going to defeat these people? And God said, I will do it for you. So there are some battles that are not your battle. You have to give it to God. Don't look at the battle and say, I cannot. Look at the battle and then cry to God for help. Some things 
It's only the Lord who will be able to do. God said, I'll drive them out before you. At 12. Be careful not to make a treaty with those who live in the land where you are going, or there will be a snare among you. So that is a challenge. A lot of Christians have married the world to the extent that God finds it difficult to do the separation. You have to set yourself apart. Don't make treaty with idol worshippers. As a Christian, call them into God's kingdom. And that is the commandment. 13. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and cut down uh, their Asherah poles. Scatter everything because these were idols. 14. Do not worship any other god. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. God is jealous that when you allow or worship either other things, you make him jealous. 15. Be careful not to make a treaty with those who live in the land. So that he gives us a reason. For when they prostitute themselves to their gods and sacrifice to them, they will invite you and you will eat their sacrifices. But the sacrifices are unto demons. So when you eat food and meat and drinks offered to demons, you are a partaker of that and the demon can have access or influence your life. And God said, don't do that. So in the New Testament, we do the Holy Communion. In the Old Testament, they have the Passover and the many other prescribed sacrifices. If not, some demon will take charge. And before you realize, you are worshiping a demon. So God said, don't be partakers of them. Don't make a treaty with them because once they become your friend, because if your friend invites you to a sacrifice, you have to go, right? Don't do that. But he gives us a more uh, reason here. Verse 16. And when you choose some of their daughters as wives for your sons, and those daughters prostitute themselves to their gods, they will lead your sons to do the same. So I've seen why a Christian should be careful to marry a Christian. If not, you know, you see, you may think I love him or her, but the challenge is that as that uh, unbeliever goes to his or her God, the unbeliever will try to take you also to his or her God. And so then you are likely to suffer harm. So that's a problem. We've seen a lot of uh, good Christians who married unbelievers and later on they left the Christian faith. So just be a bit careful. Uh, yeah, we know that you love the unbeliever. Yeah, but see, your salvation is more important and God is wiser than us. So he gives us this reason. Make sure you marry a believer. If a man, a woman is not willing to worship God and to change and to repent, and you want to go to heaven and serve Christ, then be a bit be, be careful that you don't uh, enter. If I were you, I'll make sure we saw this out before we go in so that no, none will suffer harm. So he said, Christ, uh, the God told Moses to other people that they should not do that. Verse 17 says, Do not make any idols at all. Once you make idol, demon will come and live in it. 18. He talks about some festivals. Celebrate, celebrate the festival of unleavened bread. For seven days, eat bread without yeast as I commanded you. Do this at the appointed time in the month of Abib, for in that month he came out of Egypt. So there were a lot of uh, 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 celebrations, and we love celebration. Human, we love it. That's why people go to the uh, disco and all the club. Why? It's to celebrate, yeah. So if you can go to the presence of God for a whole week and have wonderful godly celebrations, I think and this is even free. No demons, you know, you'll not get yourself into trouble with alcohol and police and women and men and diseases and all that. So celebrate for seven days. 19. The first of the of the first offspring of every womb belongs to me, including all the firstborn males of your livestock whether from herd or flock. Redeem the firstborn donkey with a lamb, but if you do not redeem it, break its neck. Redeem all your firstborn sons. So the demons also like firstborn children. So God tells us, your children, your firstborn children are for me. In other words, he's teaching us not to give any of our children to any demon or idol. If not, some people will do that. And there are many ways this can happen. Some will call themselves godfathers and godmothers and if that godfather or godmother you know, has demon in him or her or is a witch or a wizard then, then that child that you have given to that man or woman will also carry that spirit 
So there's, there's no point doing God fathers and mothers. So, uh, dedicate your children to the living God and ask God to bless you. And you, the parent, you have to be the Godfather and Godmother because you are responsible. You brought that child into the world and you must take care of that child. And if you do it well, God will bless you. If you don't do it well, you are accountable to God. Never uh, hand over your child to any Godmother, Godfather. That concept sounds godly, but uh, it can easily become an idol worship and Children can be abused by these so-called godmothers and fathers if they don't have the spirit of God living in them. But sometimes you can't even tell. Because in, and most of the time, the people who are close to us, those who love us so much, most of them are not purely, they are not genuinely born again. And then the verse, verse 19 says, The first offspring of everyone belongs to you with right The verse 20, Redeem them, and no one is to appear before me empty-handed. 21, Six days you shall labor, but on the seventh day you shall rest. Even during the plowing season and harvest, you must rest. So God gives us a day of rest. In the New Testament, it is the Sunday, the day of the Lord, the day that Christ rose from the dead, that we observe this special rest. 22, celebrate the Feast of Weeks with the first fruit of wheat, of wheat harvest and the festival of ingathering at the turn of the year. Three times a year, all your men are to appear before the servant Lord, the God of Israel. I will drive out nations before you and enlarge your territory, and no one will covet your land when you go up three times a year to appear before the Lord your God. So three times a year, they were to appear before the Lord for a long period of time, and God promised them that as you leave your land, no one will encroach, no one will take your possessions. As you spend time to worship God on Sundays, as you spend time to do evangelism, God will also protect you and reward you in our context. That is the explanation of that text. And so the people were not worried if they had to leave their farms and, and their towns and villages and go to Jerusalem to present themselves before the Lord three times a year and on special occasions. And so when you go to church, it's not a waste of time. God has a way to reward when you go on missions in the name of the Lord, it's not a waste of time. God has a way to reward. And then he tells us, 25, Do not offer the blood of a sacrifice to me along with anything containing yeast. And do not let any of the sacrifice from the Passover festival remain until morning. So here the yeast in the New Testament, St. Paul's theology tells us that the yeast represents sin. So make sure that all the sacrifices you offer to the Lord, that there's no sin. And whatever you can do today for the Lord, do it. Don't, don't wait till the following day. Uh, there are a lot of uh, interpretations that uh, you can get from here. 26. Bring the best of the first fruit of your soul to the house of the Lord your God. Yes. That teaches us also to respect God. That anything we bring to God must be the best. And the first fruit principle always teaches us to think about God first because He helped us to be successful. To acquire the work and to produce all that we have. So the moment you have your harvest, your pay, your salary, you think about God first. Not second, not third, not last. So that's the first fruit principle. So that God will bless it. So that the rest of the produce will be fruitful. No pest will come. But there are a lot of people, they receive good salary, all right. But I tell you, the pest, and the pest and all those media non spirit will come and take away their salary. So in the olden days, they will first take some to God so that God will bless it, meaning the rest of the fruit or the harvest will also be blessed. It says, do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. So don't abuse animal. Don't take a young goat and kill and eat. God says, no, allow the goat to, to, to be matured before. 27, then the Lord said to Moses, write down these words for in accordance with these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. Moses was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking water. And he wrote on the tablet the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. So that's what happened. That Moses received instructions on celebrations and sacrifices and godly laws. Uh, and then God said, give it to my people and they should teach them. And they should tell them that all festivals and sacrifices are to be made to me. For the reason... Uh, being that if not human beings will make sacrifices and even sacrifice their own children and other things to to demons i know quite a lot of people who have done that they even sacrifice parts of their human body and they never got anything and they died very poor useless wretched 
that as our sermon is teaching us today, if you turn to Christ, Christ can set you free from all these dark forces and principalities. So in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the Old Testament, God gave them this uh, instructions to observe. In the New Testament, they're setting apart a portion of our time for the worship of God and service to God is a moral and unchangeable duty. So the first day of the week or the lost day, Sunday, is the time kept by holy Christians, guided by God's Spirit in remembrance of Christ's resurrection. So, so the early church, the apostles were guided by God's Spirit. And then they set Sunday aside as a day of worship. And in the New Testament, because of the work of the Holy Spirit, any other day can be a day of worship. And God can be worshipped anywhere, wherever Christians gather and call upon the name of the Lord. Not only in Jerusalem. And, and, and access to God has been opened. So every man, every woman, you know, has access to go to God through Jesus. In the Old Testament, it was only the high priest who would go to the most holy place once a year. But the New Testament, because of Jesus Christ, all these sacrifices and celebrations, they have been fulfilled. And so that gives us the fulfillment of all that uh, uh, was going on in the olden days. We also have Easter celebrations that we remember the suffering, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And people will kick against it. And I said, yeah, if, if you are remembering and looking into scripture, how Christ suffered and died for our sins, and inviting unbelievers to come and have this experience, then of course, such a festival uh, is a good festival. We also have the Lent, that is the six-week period leading up to Easter. So for six weeks, you just be focusing on repentance and changing your heart and preparing yourself uh, for Easter. So we are in Lent now, and I think it, it's a good thing that Christians should continue to observe instead of you giving your time and heart to other things if six weeks uh, you just focus on what to do to change from your sinful lifestyle and prepare your heart reflecting on how Christ suffered and died for your sins and the victory that we have as human beings because of the resurrection of Christ you see that empty tomb was the hope of humanity. That empty tomb was the hope of humanity. Why? Because had it not been that empty tomb, empty tomb you and I, uh, if we die, we will remain in the, in, in the ground forever. But when Christ died and rose and on that early morning, when they saw the tomb being empty of his body, that was the hope that when you and I, too, when we die, we shall also receive resurrection. So the empty tomb, is the hope of humanity. So, so, so is that gives us the opportunity to think and reflect uh, upon all these things. I know some will argue that, that, but we can do this almost every day. In the week. Yes, it's true, but we know how life is. Sometimes we can be uh, uh, too busy to the point where we even forget to look at some of these things, right? So, so these special occasions, and we have Easter as well. So we have Christmas as well. We have communion service, that a special shared meal between Christians and our, our risen Lord. Communion, instead of you going to uh, at some shrine to, to have uh, a dinner with some demon or to eat food and meat sacrifice to demon. You, you can go to church and you have the Holy Communion, the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. Symbolic, yet communicating a powerful message to the Christian church. Then we have children dedication to God, not to demons, to God. Not, so you, you present your child to God and say, Lord, I dedicate my child to you because you gave him or her to me and I believe that you are the right God to take care of him or her, nurture him or her under your gracious influence. May that which you have ordained, purpose for this child come to pass. Today, I dedicate this child to you, Lord. That is what we do. The book of Luke 2 tells us that Christ was presented to God at the temple by Mary and Joseph. So that is what we do. Uh, all this baby shower and all this, you know, they, they don't have, they don't add anything. Even if you are not lucky, those who will come for that baby shower or whatever, a uh, 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 Christian ceremony, some may have demons in them, some may be witches and wizards and just coming to, you know, harm you and the baby child in your in your in your womb and then we also have marriage celebrations as well godly way between a man and a woman we asking god to bless the union 
and protect and to give the man and the woman the love, the grace they need to build a new family. It will be a blessing to the church, to the society, and to the kingdom of God. We have baptisms as well, that people who give their lives to Christ are baptized into water, and that signifies it's a symbolic act of service, telling, making a public, public declaration that today, this man, this woman also belongs to Christ. And you going in, that also signifies, you know, the barrier of Jesus Christ. And you coming up from the water, that also signifies that you are now a newborn baby, if you like, in the Lord. You, you, are, you have been resurrected from your sins. And that you identify yourself with Christ's suffering, burial, death, and resurrection. So that also has a powerful message then we have we have many other godly celebrations so church our focus is very simple uh, many people have been sacrificed to idols and demons sadly but jesus can set them free we are trying to understand how uh, these happen so that we will know how to live very very well very well so that's why i'm taking my time to break things down and also to stress on the importance of all the prescribed celebrations and sacrifices we have in scripture and how we can make good use of them and we shouldn't see them as rituals you know people today they complain all oh, the church is full of rituals and these are not important they have no understanding they communicate profound truth to us if not we will go astray so what should we do with the old testament festivals and sacrifices we are in the new testament the new testament teaches us that all that were given to us in the Old Testament were shadows of the gospel blessings. The law had a shadow of good things to come, not the very substance of the things. Hebrews 10 verse 1. So the Old Testament laws and all that we've been reading, they were shadows of the, of the real stuff, the substance that is in Christ. They were introduced temporarily until the coming of Christ. And so Christ is the end of the law. So in Christ, we don't do animal sacrifices because Christ has sacrificed his body for us. So if you go to any place, any church, any faith group, and they tell you bring an animal for sacrifice, be suspicious. What you are going to do is to sacrifice that blood to a demon, not God. Keep that. The book of Hebrews 10, you read the whole chapter, chapter 9 and 10. Christ has sacrificed his body for the sins of the world once and for all. The new, so we don't make any sacrifices. When it comes to festival celebrations, in the New Testament, if you want to celebrate the festival of uh, weeks, it's not possible because we don't live in that society. So we, we also have other celebrations that God has given us through the apostles and the prophets who are the foundation of the church. Christ built his church on the, on the faith of the apostles and the prophets. And God guided them. And so in the New Testament, in our days we have special days. And I've mentioned some of them. Christ is the end of the law. But the second part of our topic says that Jesus can set men and women who have been sacrificed to demons. There are plenty and sometimes you won't even know if you are one of them or not. But from what we've discussed, I pray that God will guide you and that God will teach you uh, and reveal things to you so that you know whether you have been sacrificed to an idol, a demon, whether someone has uh, called forth your name in, in a, on a particular shrine or whether your name is being mentioned for whatever ritual or for whatever purposes or whether some demon has occupied a place in your heart, in your life, and it's tormenting you, and it's messing you up, and it's causing you to live a very bad and ungodly lifestyle. You know, I pray that the Lord God should speak and speak to you so powerful. But if you have any concerns, it's fine. We can arrange and have a meeting to look into things and pray to the Lord for help. So those who have been sacrificed or dedicated to idols uh, are, can be set free by Jesus Christ. That's the position of the gospel. Romans 1 16 the gospel is the power of god unto salvation for all those who believe so and when the gospel is preached and 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 you believe this tells the forces that being in your life that from today you are under christ and this gives christ the right to drive out every demon every idol from your life 
and uh, uh, St. Peter telling uh, the church, 1 Peter 2, uh, 25, he says that, For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. So when you give your life to Christ, Christ becomes your chief shepherd and overseer of your soul. No demon, no man, no man has any right to touch your soul because Christ will guide, will guard and protect you until he presents you blameless and unblemished before to God the Father on that day. Christ, his blood will cleanse you from all your sins. This is beautiful. So he forgives and he redeems us from the powers of darkness. And this was the assignment our Lord Jesus gave to St. Paul. And when Christ met him on that road to Damascus, in the book of Acts 26, 12 to 18, he told the leaders, King Agrippa, and all those assembled at Rome, what Christ told him and the message Christ gave him to share with people and communities around the world. So let's read Acts 26, 12 to 18. So Paul, he is speaking. On one of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priest. About noon, King Agrippa, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the, star, than the sun, blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the gods. 15. Then I asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. The Lord replied, Now get up and stand up on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. And that was the message Christ gave to Paul. That Paul, you have been persecuting the church, and when you persecute the church, you are persecuting me. And now, I want to send you, but I'll protect you. No one will harm you. I'm sending you to the Gentiles. Go and tell them the gospel. And, and, and then open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. So the message that Christ has given to the church, if people will believe, they will, their eyes will be open to see truth and to worship the living God. They will move away from the power of Satan and they will be under the power of God. And, 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 and Paul, in Romans 1.16, he said the gospel is the power unto salvation. It saves. And as I speak, give your life to Christ. Be genuine and give your life to Christ. Repent. Change from your sinful lifestyle because that demon who is destroying you will also influence you to live a bad life. And when you stop living the bad life, you are no more feeding the de demon. The demon has no option than to go because you don't want his lifestyle. And Christ, your Lord, will encourage you to live a life of peace and joy and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. With these demons, they have no place in your life. The word of God is powerful. When you hear and you believe, it changes everything. The problem is people will hear the word, but they will not believe. Because when you believe, that will lead you to action. I pray tonight that as you are hearing the word, you will believe and change. Mark 1, 14, 15, when Christ announced the gospel, he said, the time has come. The kingdom of God is here. Believe the good news and repent from your sins. Brothers and sisters, it's not too difficult. Don't allow the enemy to deny you the life that God has so ordained for you to live. And Jesus Christ, the one that the church preaches and the one that I preach, the one that who died for our sins, if you make him the Lord, He's your Lord and Savior. He has received the, the power, the greatest authority under the universe. And Christ will keep you safe in his word. That none of whom the Father has given me shall perish. But that I'll keep all of them safe until that day. And Jesus is my Lord. 
He's the shepherd and overseer of my soul. And I want to encourage you that you believe in Jesus as the New Testament teaches us. And also share this message. I'm sure you know people uh, who, who are under the influence and they are struggling a lot. The enemy has blinded them. And we pray that the power of Jesus should set them free. Pray for them. Share the gospel with them. Plead with them to come to Jesus Christ so that they will live the life, the good life that God has planned for humanity. If not, we will see them uh, unfortunately struggling and struggling. And when you read the Old Testament, I'm sure you, you now understand why God gave us all those prescriptions about s s uh, uh, sacrifices, uh, celebrations and offerings and that. If, if not, we will follow other gods. So God has taught us and may we all have heard and believe and follow the commandments of God. Our teaching today is very simple. That many people have been sacrificed to idols and demons, but Jesus can set them free. How did this happen? We've looked at fear of them. May the Lord bless you. Let me say, as usual, hello to the few people as we pray that in the name of Jesus, may the Lord open our eyes and turn us from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to the power of God. I pray. Any darkness in your life be replaced with the light of Christ. Any dark forces, powers, principality, witchcraft, spirit, sorcery, anger, gossiping, any evil uh, uh, agenda in your life be turned into something uh, beautiful and, and, and positive. So let me say hello to those of you online uh, as a way of fellowship. And so, and so yeah, let me say those online. We have Rocky, Enim, and the wife. God bless you. Lorraine, God bless you. And Ajoa Sase, God bless you and be with you. Shanti, Shatal, God bless you. Pastor Joan Hale, God bless you. Greetings to the family. Then we have Samuel Akriji and Ada Kolo. They are all watching with that. God bless you guys. Then Bess Equina, God bless you. Bess and Chrissy Henry, uh, God bless you. We have Pastor Joan saying hallelujah. Regina Kwaku, we have Sharon Smith. Saint Amen Bishop. We have uh, Edward saying God bless you and Cindy Smith uh, saying Amen Bishop. And so uh, just to say hello to and Yasmin saying Amen Bishop as well and the many. There are quite a lot online here. So may the Lord bless us and and the power that raised Jesus from that grave, that power to come upon us to break every yoke and chain and to to move us from darkness to light and the power from, and from the power of Satan to the power of the living God. Uh, Gabe is also watching with us and teach people not to give themselves to idols or go to idol places but they should give their lives to the living God. God bless you and God willing we will be uh, receiving a word of encouragement from the Lord on, on Friday 8 p.m. Then on Sunday there will be worship but those of you in London will go to church and worship. Uh, God bless you. Uh, shalom. Amen.